misinformation. It's destroying the internet and it's all your fault. Well, it's not your fault, it's your brain's fault, but I'll explain. The internet is a glorious place, a free platform where anyone can share their point of view. Except the internet can be kind of terrible because everyone lies, like all the time. Anyone with a smartphone or Photoshop can just make up their own misinformation and then the rest of us spread it around like mono at a frat party. Photoshop a picture of a broken voting machine and you can call an entire election into doubt. Put on a lab coat and start talking about microchips in almond milk and suddenly you have health misinformation that can be shared and reshared on TikTok until millions of people have seen it. And this looks about my size. Either way, even if you're very online and think you know better, the bad news is your brain is kind of hardwired to believe it. Take this totally made up example that I just came up with. Did you know that according to research from Durden University, if you mix equal parts gasoline and frozen orange juice concentrate, you can make napalm? The hydrocarbons react with the organic citric acids at freezing point, which makes an explosive. And no one in the government is telling you. Except turns out that's not true. In fact, it's a line from the classic film Fight Club. Did you know if you mixed equal parts of gasoline and frozen orange juice concentrate, you can make napalm? <laughs> But add some basic Wikipedia research and some science words and suddenly you have a piece of misinformation that can spread like wildfire. But it's not just influencers on TikTok. Videos edited to make politicians look drunk, content farms building entire fake news websites to sway elections, viral tweets, doctored photos. This stuff is everywhere and it's becoming a big problem. So why do we believe this junk? Well, just like they told me when I tried to audition for Jeopardy, it's your brain letting you down. Let me explain it with psychology. One, you're more likely to believe the first thing you hear. First impressions of a situation can be pretty hard to shake. Two, the illusory truth... The illusory truth effect. The more something's repeated, the more likely you are to believe it, even if it's false. Three, any time we're overwhelmed by information, we're less likely to believe experts and more likely to believe people like us. Even if, it's not a book, it's DVDs. Even if those people are telling us that the aliens built the pyramids. Uncle Gavin, please stop sending me those videos. And four, confirmation bias. Something that aligns to our values or political ideology, well, we're more likely to believe it. And then there are emotions. No, 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 we can't, we can't use that song. I'm talking about your emotional response to misinformation. If you see a tweet or a news headline that makes you really angry, well, you're more likely to throw your analytical brain right out the window. And all of these things add up to make us really prone to the misinformation that we see online. So if even the best of us can fall victim to this kind of stuff, then how do we spot misinformation and stop it from spreading? Because I have bad news, the tech companies aren't gonna do it all. Here are our five takeaways. First up, just because you see it online doesn't make it true. Misinformation is used to sow political discord, to make money or even get clout, so be skeptical. Number two, take a breath. Misinformation is designed to get us emotionally reactive, so we share it quickly. So make sure you stop and think. Number three, verify your source. Make sure you actually click on the link on that social post and then look at the URL of the website you're on. Look for things like quotes and links out to other reliable news sources on the news websites you visit. And make sure you don't get your news from your Uncle Gavin. Four, do a reverse image search on Google. This is a great way to check when and where a photograph was taken. Misinformation often uses real images, but taken completely out of context. And finally, if you can't verify something, then don't share it. Or if you want to debunk it, then make sure you don't just retweet or repost the link. That could just build engagement and feed the algorithm, which boosts the misinformation even more. With everything that's going on in the world right now, the stakes for stopping misinformation have never been higher. But we can all play our part. I'm Claire Riley for CNET. Good evening, and tonight on CNET, we are talking about misinformation.